okay, 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 okay. All right. Um, I, um, I do understand what's going on, but I just really wanted to watch something from the odd ones out. So I guess that I should figure out what the, my animation is by using the computer. So I really wanted to do something like this. So I want to know what James is speaking. So I'll go ahead and react to this now. When you're watching any animated piece of media, I think it's easy to forget that you're watching drawings move. Excuse me? What kind of Harry Potter dark magic is this? Since when did drawings move? I mean, I'm not even sure what drawings move, especially most people who really like drawing stuff like me. I always draw tons of stuff here by using this one on paper to create this sketch of the object characters right in between. While some of them I really definitely done by this part of a little bit of a book over from this part of a show of the Anatomy Insanity and BFDI, I really am trying to like do some other creation as well, like Pyramidy, or even definitely, of course, you know, Wood Spoonie and Terry Crews, especially with others too. But I can't really say how much I usually do for my creative drawing on my sketch paper. So it's really kind of like very uh, tough for me to like try to handle it on my own. But I can't really say how much I usually do for this drawing creation. It's really like impossible to get over this, but I don't really think nobody knows how do I respond to that. But anyway, let's see what happens if James has a response to this about drawing things like it's anime and I can't really think of what it is now. I should probably do for my animation for my next class in for my college semester, so I should be able to do that. I drew a picture of a dog once, but it hasn't moved at all, not even to play fetch. Well, what's your- <laughs> Um, okay. First off, the paper of the dog does not move. Secondly, it's definitely the art of your work with the piece of paper that you just draw things, so why in the world would you have to do that? Seriously, I just don't really think that nobody would ever do that. What of Harry Potter dark magic is this? Since when did drawings move? I drew a picture of a dog once, but it hasn't moved at all, not even to play fetch. Yeah, I mean, I told you this before, it never moves. That's what happens most of the time. Well, what you're really watching isn't actually moving. What you're really watching is a series of individual frames played at a rapid speed on a liquid crystal display screen that emit photons into your eyeball receptors that get processed by your brain into what it perceives as movement. It was all a trickery, you see. A ruse that you fell for hook, line, and sinker. Now, a lot of you probably already know about the concept of the frame rate, but what I want you to understand is that in cartoons, every head turn, every blink, every everything that happens had to be meticulously drawn by a person who studied anatomy and knows about physics and movement, knowing full well that their drawing was only going to be seen for a fraction of a fraction of a second. It's more like a fraction of a second, and definitely the frames per second. So I could ask that most people who really have been good animators, I should probably help them out if they are good object characters with this design. I mean, I want to get into this one so I can help them try to see what I got. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of hard work to do this, but it's great to always ask for help. I couldn't do it without them, so I would definitely do work with them. And you weren't even watching. You were on your phone. Today, I... Uh, do you think I was watching on my phone? I did watch something, like, on my phone. Some a little bit of a cartoons on here, too. And some a little bit of a TMOJ channels with animations. And definitely Nicholas the Animator, one of a YouTube channel. I just really can't tell how much there is. So, yeah, I have no questions to ask. Especially on the TV, too. I would like to turn back the sands of time and talk about some of the ways animators were able to achieve the illusion of life without the help of modern technology. Yeah, the uh, modern technology, especially making a process of the storyboard. If you go check out my last previous reaction video, all the way down of making a movie. And this is definitely what it's supposed to look like.
I hope by watching you can better understand and appreciate the medium of animation as much as I do, because the amount of dedication and hard work that goes into just making drawings move is unreal. And if you're like me and already know a bit about animation history and find this kind of stuff fascinating, uh, don't worry, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up either. Now, we know- Oh, yeah, especially to my friends too. Well, uh, maybe I should make a new friend connection and know about the object characters of the show. Well, let's hope they find an answer. I know that animation is just copious amounts of drawings being shown in rapid succession, but how the are we going to get people to look at copious amounts of drawings in rapid succession without a computer? I mean, without a computer, I mean, that would be very difficult. I mean, they weren't invented yet. Long ancient history, I mean, why in the world? And also, watch out with that profanity word you said, okay? Well, believe it or not, there's actually quite a few things we can do without even having to use a camera. One method we can try is by drawing out all of our frames on a stack of paper. I know that's the time consuming part, but after we're done doing that, we'll hang up all our drawings side by side on a very long wall. Then we'll ride a bike next to the wall and continuously have our head turned facing the wall, and if we pedal fast enough, we'll zip by the drawing so fast that it'll look like they're moving. Man, your teeth was like showing that grind out of here. I mean, man. I couldn't even tell right that. And yes, uh, looking at a wall, I mean, what in the world, man? But uh, I'm thinking I like to do some a little bit of a storyboard. And that's a perfect thing. And some of the animators, I might help them out with that. So yeah, I could definitely help them and figure out what they got to do. Well, that's definitely the hard part to get this one of a set design and definitely put it in the background of where they were at. Hey look! It's a horse! <laughs> okay. Ow! Ouch. Perhaps you should, should have said that you should watch where you're going. You're probably thinking, that's not how animation is made. And you're right. This method of animation is totally impractical. But not impossible. This type of human... Okay, what in the earth was that? Was that a, a, like a face swap? I mean, I don't know what to tell you about this. And watch out for the train, it's right behind you! And transportational animation has been done before in subway tunnels with the results looking pretty legit. Oh, okay, I I never even see that. I mean, this is the Ma Mass Transiscope Bill brand. Oh, I never seen it like that. Oh, interesting. Couldn't really ask. Well, you already may add a railroad tracks and then let it go through. All right, so that's what it is, I guess. I mean, this minion looks like he's totally moving. I might as well be in the cinema. And for those of the gamer variety, YouTuber Pale of Pears was able to achieve this method of animation flawlessly in Minecraft. But if- Uh-huh, I couldn't even tell what that is. If you wanted to do something more practical, you could instead take your drawings off the really long wall and then stack them up like a book and then just flip through the paper quickly. I mean, that is a great choice. Yeah, better way to do the flip book and definitely doing it on a scratch of paper to make sure it, that animation is right. Mm-hmm, definitely like that one too. Making a flip book. Flip book, flip note studio on a DS or anything. If you have some sticky notes lying around that you forgot about in a junk drawer somewhere, you can make a pretty simple ball bouncing animation really quickly with the results being, you know, kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool actually, especially you know the part of a work of art. A fun fact, this type of animation was featured in every single copy of the Animorphs books, which I never read. I would just flip through the pages and watch the children in the corner transform into elephants and starfish and this weird blue alien centaur thing and what the heck was going on in these books man okay this next method of showing people drawings in rapid succession it's going to be a little bit crazy i don't want to uh, freak you out but it's basically oh on the same level as rocket science okay we're gonna have to jump up a whole dimension for this one what you're going to do is sculpt out a three-dimensional figure of whatever you want to animate let's animate I don't know, this guy jumping. 
of the guy jumping like over what kind? I don't know. So first I'm gonna sculpt my guy just standing there, just being a dude. This will be frame one. Frame one, I like you. Now, okay, I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, I see where this is going. You're gonna take a picture of the sculpture, then change its pose slightly, take a picture of that, and then slightly change the pose over and over while continuously starting and stopping the camera, making it seem like our subject has some sort of motion. No, actually, we're not gonna be doing any of that. Cameras haven't been invented yet in this hypothetical. What we're doing instead is making a whole new sculpture that will be the next frame of our animation. So it'll be our guy again, bending his legs a little bit. Oh, uh, the bending of legs. Like, you definitely look like you're making a little bit of a claim out of it to bend in the legs. I couldn't even tell what that is. It's kind of very tricky to hear that. Getting ready for the jump. All right, neat, that's frame two. Now let's do this a total of, I don't know, 16 times? That sounds good. Let's also make the 16th sculpture look like it came before the first sculpture. So you understand it's gonna go from the 16th sculpture back to the first one. It's it's a loop, like a TikTok. Oh uh, yeah, like it's a TikTok thing. I mean, I know this, that it's like a backwards TikTok thing at the clock, but in going reverse hand, I mean, that's kind of a little weird to go that way. But the uh, in the clockwise order, I mean, it would have been that way. Well, can't do it that way, just for now. We're doing a tick-tock loop. Now we're gonna take all 16 of our sculptures and space them out evenly on a round table. Sorry, Arthur, I'm gonna need this. Now, make the table spin. That's that's on you to figure out how to do, I don't know. Well, I, I'm not sure if I could do it that way, but like it's spinning like a wheel of fortune wheel, spinning around and around. I mean, I couldn't really think I could keep concentrating with my eyes. So um, I guess it will be a hard thing to go with. Maybe get the bike guy from the first example to pedal or something. I doubt any of you are actually following along, but if you are, put all your sculptures on a spinning table right now and make it quick, all right? I'm not gonna wait for you. And now for the final step, Turn your lights on and off really quickly. And if we did everything right, the effect we get is mesmerizing. Oh, okay. I never seen that, like a 3D Zoe Troop forever jumping to frogs too. Huh, that's pretty interesting. Going fast with that? I never seen like this. Yeah, I don't know what is happening, but <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, wow, that's pretty insane. I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys, but uh, it is really that fast. And also with the spinning wheel, like you fling the finger very fast. It's like a fidget spinner, but it's definitely very different with the animation, how it's rolling. And it goes from time frame by frame of each set. So I couldn't really ask. I mean, what in the world, guys? Happening is that the light shines at the first sculpture, and then we turn the lights off. Cool. Then as the table spins, the light will turn back on when the second sculpture is in the same position as the first. So we turn the lights on when the sculptures are in the same spot, and we turn them off when they're not. And what we end up seeing is all of our figures standing in a circle performing the animation, and we don't even register that the whole thing is spinning. And congratulations, you all know what a zoetrope is now. Which, I know, is a pretty fun word that you can whip out at parties like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, zoetrope, I mean, zoetrope, I mean, i never seen anything like this word. Well, <laughs> good meaning. Yeah, I know a unique word that starts with the letter Z that isn't xylophone. Another fun thing about the zoetrope was that a 3D rendering of one was featured in the season two opening of Mob Psycho 100. So that's what that spinning thing in the intro was. It was a zoetrope. Zoetrope. I mean, try to correct that grammar, won't you mind? I get it now. Okay, let's talk about one more way we can show people drawings in quick succession without a camera, and it's the easiest method by far. So, all we need is this glitchy, abstract drawing like this. Huh, pretty cool and random, right? Yeah, I think so. 
It would have been randomized. I mean, I can't really tell what it is now. Except it's not. It's not random at all. Yeah, your face kind of sacrificing me. I lied. I mean, don't try to lie for yourself. Every line here is placed very deliberately. Let me show you something. If we take this floppy, transparent sheet full of vertical bars and cover up most of the drawing, Hey, look at that. The outline we end up seeing looks like one of them kitty cats. Now, if we slide the transparent sheet over and reveal different parts of the drawing, huh, it looks like a kitty cat but in a different position. And if we keep sliding the sheet over, revealing different parts of the drawing, look at him go. This is called a barrier grid animation, and with the right base drawing, you can make all sorts of animations that don't hurt to look at at all. And also, I just want to point out that a barrier grid animation was also featured in the season two opening of Mob Psycho 100. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, that that is really amazing. Like, scramination. I mean, that's pretty like wow. I mean, can't really tell what it is now, but you know the thing because everybody knows that it's pretty cool to see it. Especially if you want to make that design, you just got to make sure that you have that scram on top of it and then move it along the paper. I mean, very cool. <laughs> I would see how well you guys did it on your own paper. Hey, do you guys want to watch anime later? So all these different methods of showing people drawings in quick succession, I don't know if there's a word for it, but I'm calling it physical animation. Like animation you can hold and touch with your fingers, you know? I mean, yeah, like that. Especially with the Lego set, with physical animation to move from here between there. I mean, it might be a behind the scenes one. So I might be thinking of the Lego movies. Well, it might be that. So I don't know. Maybe if there is one, maybe you could watch it now. All those warrior cat animation memes, those that's digital animation, right? This is physical, it's the real deal. But there's one form of physical animation that we haven't talked about yet that's unarguably the most popular and the most important form of physical animation to have ever existed on Earth. Excuse me. Oh, excuse yourself. Yeah, I guess you just burped yourself. Watch out with that. Okay, now we're going to use cameras. Okay, they, they finally figured it out. With the invention of film, showing people multiple images in quick succession had never been easier. Now we can take something from real life, burn an image of that into a film strip, process it, and then shine a light through it again to get a recreation of the image. And if we roll this whole strip of film over this strobe light, we get moving pictures. That's why they're called movies. Because they move. What the fu- A lot of time- Okay. All right. Easy now. All right. Don't be acting like that. Like me. Times film was used to capture the movements of real people, but it was also used in the same way to capture the movements of people of the animated variety. Yes, especially to one of the uh, variety of animations, like in Anime Insanity Invitational, the falling thing. Don't you get what I mean? Let's take a look at an old, old cartoon. The 1968 animated Batman series. The first time Batman has ever appeared in the animation form. You know, the really, really old Batman cartoon that had onomatopoeias appear on the screen during fight scenes? Boom! Pow! ka -chow. Except they didn't! They didn't do that in the cartoon. Visually showing the verbiage of impacts was exclusively an Adam West thing. In the cartoon, you gotta see those impacts! Hey, can I ask you a thought-provoking question? What's your question you want to ask? Go ahead and tell me. What the f*** am I looking at? Okay, don't be like that! I know it's Batman high-kicking a goon, but how is it moving? This frame was captured on film, so there had to be a physical- It has to be like a physical part of the attack. I mean, whatever this is there, James, it has to be emotional to go with the hypnotic change. Hygienic change on that one camera to capture it, right? So where is this drawing? It's not on a computer. Computers in the 60s looked like this. So where is this? I mean, I just spot at that point. Puffish eating a carrot. All right, and the other one, it, that's Bambi, right? Yeah. So every animated movie and animated TV show and animated anime 
before the year 2000-ish, used what's called cell animation. This frame of Batman was hand-painted, that's right, painted with special paint onto a transparent celluloid sheet, or cell. Yeah, of course that is. It's definitely really like a trans paint to go with that special one that you had to put it on. I mean, you gotta figure it out. Just make the best one count, all right? Just don't think about using a real paint. And then this transparent sheet was laid on top of a hand-painted background, and then this goon that got kicked, well, he had to be painted on his own cell sheet too, and then this image of sandwiched art was captured onto a film thing, a strip, shit. Then the Batman cell would come off and be replaced by a whole new hand-painted cell of Batman, and then that frame would be captured, and then the whole process would repeat again and again until the shot was done. This one shot that lasted a little over a second used 14 different hand-painted drawings of Batman, and the goon had six, just for a second. Now, because having to hand-paint 20 different images for one second is insane, there are some things we can do to cut corners without having to sacrifice too much quality. Like in this shot, Robin takes five frames to turn his head, but his body doesn't move, so we can paint his body once on its own cell, and now we only need to paint five different heads. And since we already have all the frames painted, we can just use the same frames in reverse to make his head turn the other way. I mean, definitely the whole body choice. I mean, would that be a right thing to do that? I mean, I wouldn't even take this one because this is like a really like a lot of challenging to get right from here. But I need a full 3D part of the object character to try to put it around it. And then on the back of a slot, it's going to be really hard to like put it right in between. So yeah, I mean, definitely got to make a lot of help. So it would be a better idea. Yeah, I would definitely uh, work with the object uh, show that I would definitely want to do. I mean, I've got a good feeling about it. And you don't need to pay a background artist to paint a background if you just use blue. A big part of cell animation was being able to animate pieces of a character independently of each other. That's actually why so many old cartoon characters had accessories around their necks, so the animators could separate the characters' heads from their bodies, making it easier to animate. Fred wasn't rocking that ascot just because it was trendy. One of the nice things about using a computer to animate is that you can play back what you've animated and clearly see if your timing is correct and if there's any quick adjustments you can make. Being able to see what your previous frames are is so important there's actually a term for it called onion skinning. But animators pre-2K didn't have computers to re-watch their work, so here's what they did instead. Before they even put paint onto a cell, they first had to draw all their frames out onto a piece of paper. And they didn't work on the frames in chronological order. Like, they didn't go, Okay, I just drew the first frame of Batman. Okay, here's the second frame of Batman. Okay, I'm gonna go do the third frame of Batman. Okay, okay, you do the fourth frame, though. That way of animating is called straight-ahead animation, and some people use it, but the results look pretty chaotic, but it's still used pretty effectively for effects and concert visuals. But most of the time, animators will animate a character from pose to pose. Everything from pose to pose, like from DJ, Gangsta Beast, and me, especially Boomer as well, and Terry Crews, which I will get to one of the other poses later. But in that case, for Wood Spoonie, Got a great look out of him in between. I'm going to have to add more if there is. But that, it's a lot of change anyway. So yeah, I'm definitely learning it anyway. So that way I can get to in my next semester to start things off of 2024 of the fall. I couldn't really say how much this is because this is a lot of concentration to do the work. <sighs> yeah, I'm definitely thinking I might be blown out of that. But it's a lot of advanced stuff, so... You'll see how well I do. I might be able to get there. If not, maybe this sports thing could be my only prediction to do for the future. Might be enough thing. They'll draw out all the important key poses a character will make on paper, and then they'll hold the pieces of paper between each of their fingers, and then quickly flip between their drawings just to get an idea of what a drawing that goes in between those key poses would look like. Yeah, that's definitely the thing that I know for. Especially when one of those papers you could flip o over it and in between, just to make sure it matches. That's called in-betweening, just so you know. Yeah, in-betweening, that's pretty true. 
must know that. And they still wouldn't be able to get a full playback of their animation until every pencil drawing was captured on film and processed. They just had to trust their page flipping technique and their highly trained eyeballs and go, yeah, that looks about right. Let's bring out the paint. And because there are hundreds of shots all having to be animated without a computer, can you really blame the animators that some shots of Batman looked like this? Or this? It was old, remember? Yeah, kind of pretty old. But if you haven't watched it, you may not remember it until you're like 100 years old or something like that. Like the guy on the wheelchair. <laughs> That's pretty, like, weirdo. I mean, not really. Well, <laughs> it's kind of, like, really, like, scary. I mean, like, ugh. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. Well, perhaps you haven't even watched it yet. I mean, that's the only thing. Old things are bad. Okay, I kind of have a secret. Remember when I said, let's look at an old, old cartoon? Well, I might have overemphasized how old the Batman cartoon is. But I thought it's going to be like a Steamboat Willie one from Mickey Mouse. If that is true, the first one that definitely came out. I mean, I don't know if they're going to release it, but there is a new one. Especially the optical Mickeys on uh, each scene. It's going to change very differently. I mean, I don't, under I don't believe it. This is really like, no, I don't think that might not be happening like that. What in the world is it going to be now? By the time the Batman cartoon came out, the movie Bambi had been out for 25 years. And are you aware of how f***ing fluid the animation in Bambi is? Dude, Bambi goes so f***ing hard. Dude, just watch your profanity, okay? I mean, don't be like that. Like, you know... Like Stone Yoshi did. Walt literally brought in deer from the f***ing woods into their studio just so the animators could be like, Oh, that's neat. That's how deers move. I Okay, I understand this more now. What the f***? I honestly thought the Batman show came out way earlier in the animation timeline because of how it looked. Obviously, these two things are created by different studios with different animators and different budgets. And TV animation always has to create more animation per budget. But all the same techniques and equipment used to make an episode of Batman were the exact same techniques and equipment used to make an episode of Bambi. I don't mean that as a dunk on Batman. I'm more so impressed with how amazing Bambi looks. Especially since, while it came out, World War II was currently happening. So because celluloid sheets were used to animate every TV show, movie, and anime there has ever been before the year 2000-ish, by my calculations, there are millions of cell sheets out there. Like this single frame of Batman kicking, it's on a cell sheet somewhere. And more importantly, who owns it? Many of the cell- Oh man, again. I mean, it's a lot of them to make this one as the 2D anime cell, I mean. Kind of very hard one. But as you put up the clear thoughts, I mean, I would definitely do it right in between. So that could be another thing, but I, I never really just saw that one coming. Yeah, I'm just so sorry, but I was just all informing what this is all about. But hey, that's what ever happens like that. I mean, come on, guys. If you're a great animator, you got to leave me in the comment box below just to know that. Okay? I mean... Just do your best at it. I mean, if it gets too hard, don't worry. Everybody has help. And we are all here for you too. Just do your best at it. That's it. Cells that still exist have been sold to the general public. But because of how the paint and time works, cell sheets need to be kept very well preserved. So since cells are very hard to preserve, and because they're not making any new ones, some cells are worth a lot of money. Yes, of course there are. There are a lot of money. If you go check that one online, you would know how much it is. You're going to start freaking out if something comes up. I feel like, oh my god, that is so much money. Why the f would they f be expensive like that? <sighs> oh my gosh. I mean, this is definitely really starting to anger me up. This is f***ed. 
This cell and original background from My Neighbor Totoro sold for $84,000. While I'm writing the script, there's currently an auction going on for this cell from the Jungle Book for $10,000. And I own this cell of Squidward laughing that I got at a convention for $300. I mean, $300? Kind of really expensive, but not to worry what you can say about that. It's uh, not an original background. The background's a print, and it's actually not even the correct background for the, the shot. But I'm just pointing out that not all cells are thousands of dollars. You know, they, they made millions of these. So you can you can get a cell from a TV show for like, for a couple hundred. And then you, Yep, so insane. You get to own a frame of animation. Like, you, that belongs to you now. Which I think is super cool. This moment of Squidward laughing belongs to me. And you can't have it. So... I mean, I know I can't. But this Son of Beast one of my own with the guys belongs to me. And you can't have my picture of what I got. You don't belong to it. If you ever visit some friends who really like cartoons, there's a good chance that they have an animation cell somewhere on display. And those are just a handful of ways that animators were able to achieve the illusion of life without a computer. And I do just want to say, just because something was animated on a computer doesn't make it any less artistic. Yes, computers make the process easier and more streamlined, absolutely. It's still a human expressing their creativity and being in control of that. Did you hear me? It's a human expressing themselves and being in control creativity, creatively. Yeah, I mean, don't get yourself confused about that. Yeah, I definitely heard you before. Yeah, yeah now get it, right? I get this now. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about animation history. There's still quite a few things that I didn't get to cover, like how did Walt animate this panning, parallaxing shot of Bambi where the trees move on separate layers? What kind of technology did they create to, to make trees move at different speeds? I mean, there's another thing. How did Walt create this idea with the 3D motion from the Great Mouse Detective? With the scenes of the clock part of it in between. I mean, how did he come up with that idea over Alfred Hitchcock? But I'm not even noticing what is the choice between those two. Well, uh, I mean, don't give me mind. Alright, so I guess now I will understand my animator, which includes me, the Unleash Beast. So much hard work and talent is involved in every piece of animation you see, and because of animation, we're able to tell incredible stories that are nothing like anything we ever see in our day-to-day -day lives. And before I go, can we talk about the intro to the Batman series, please? Okay, um, I don't know if this will be copyrighted, but well, it might be, so, yeah. And there's flashing images warning to the flashing light and color. So, yeah, watch out. And please don't get that copyrighted away. Until then, bye. Oh my god. I just want to go over some quick announcements. I'll be quick, don't worry. Yeah, I mean, I do understand there is a scribble showdown after dark. So, if you guys got tickets there, go ahead and check it out. But I won't be doing that because... Um, I'm more into like doing my official video for myself and definitely making some object shows. So I'm more into that, especially seeing the event. So if you guys have anything that you want me to do, please leave me in the comment box below. And I'm trying to make a skit of knowing the truth. Yes, it's going to be a, like a lot of stuff for me to do. Well, a lot of like set background scenes, especially to characters as much. I really got to do something else about it. So it has to be me doing my own. So yeah, I got to figure something else out. The Scribble Showdown Tour is coming back in January to a city near you, but this time the kiddies aren't invited. That's right, only the adults this time leave the children at home with the babysitter. If you're like me and are behind on your Christmas shopping, there's some new holiday merch in the merch store, so check it out. But if the shipping won't get there in time, then there's also the Oddballs graphic novel available in retail stores like Target and Barnes & Noble and Walmart. I'll probably see you all in the new year, so uh, happy new year. Thank you. 
the thanks for watching actually oh and don't mind me because this is the creation i really i do understand okay so i guess i already watched that announcement um i didn't try to keep watching it all the time well it may not be the thing that i really wanted to know for and here's the thing right now so uh forget what the stone yoshi one and this is what the picture is drawn like a pro i mean kind of successful to use that in range but uh it's quite very hard for me to try to do this on my own to make that setup but in that case i just try to do my best at all that's the point oh yeah and this one over here too that's the one i definitely created as the pure midi i mean creative wow i mean isn't that bad isn't that great <laughs> all right so, I guess it might be fine. I'll just go ahead and put that one on here too. Finish that one up. And then, I'll probably do some a little bit of the characters in between. Sweet Beast, Dr. Drew, and especially, of course, other characters. As much as I think of that are perfect. Well, on that design, peace out everybody for a while as the computer of animations before computer dial. Or computer before animation dial. Well, I prefer more animation before computer. So yeah, that's definitely it. In the meantime, thank you for watching. And I will see you all again for the next video. Peace out, guys. Have a great night. Somebody will.